warriors. How's everyone doing? Shahab and Hugo and all you other reaction junkies. You doing okay? Newsflash, NASDAQ at new highs. Okay. So uh, USD CAD, hi Scott, is morphing into a ascending triangle, which is a reversal formation. Uh, going home on Saturday, I thought we'd get one more test down here, little ABC. Maybe it still happens, not down around just a shade, right around the 122 level or so. It's a pretty big break from here. Or we break out. Anyway, a breakout, is going to take us up to about 128. It's about a 400 point formation. And again, as I pointed out yesterday, the commodity currencies are the strength of uh, being led by Kiwi. So uh, I still think Kiwi is going to be a good short, but up here. And Aussie, I still think will be a good short, but possibly up here 7620 above this high the bears will say this is a rally to sell for one more low for a third drive that could happen too also we're getting a little bounce in the end uh, i think that this uh rally has to be sold maybe up around 11 20 ish uh maybe we'll get a right shoulder here with symmetry to the left which comes in up there around 11 10 be about 61.8 back up here that would take it down to 109.20 looking for 108 before it's done cable's still stronger okay pointed that out yesterday where it was not close to uh the low and eg still makes euro the preferred short Okay, I think we're headed for uh, a test of the lows. We could get pretty close to them, maybe take them out. I'm looking at this blue line around 8485, which isn't too far from this low at 72, excuse me. Energy trying to break, uh, trying to recover. Uh, I want to just show this Swiss in case it develops uh, later after phase. I think we have a nice classic little three drive developing here. It'll take a new high for that to occur, but it's pretty classic where you had confirmed highs here, pull back, new highs here, barely got above 70. And if we get one more push up here, um, we could have a third drive and the second one under 70. Okay, so... Uh, to be our second non-confirmation up there. It's, it's pretty similar to what we have going on in Euro. Euro looks like a one, a two, and then we haven't quite um, made the three. And uh, Euro's trying to rally. In fact, uh, Euro's much closer to the lows, you see. It's weaker than the Swiss as the Swiss is further away from last week's highs. So I'm seeing a little bit more relative weakness um, in US dollar Swiss compared to looking for longs in Euro. Everyone with me? And here we are in the dollar index. Uh, we did not make new highs. Maybe we're going to roll over here. Um, gold is still alive, even though they tried to take it down. Um, you know, I don't think that uh, gold finishes until we complete the sell off in the end. It should be supportive. And we're. Uh, we're headed towards my target in 10 year yields. So this is, uh, I think this 120 level uh, could be it. I know some people are talking 110, that's possible too, but I'm looking at a shade over 120 uh, for this to begin to terminate at this 120 level. And silver was a weak sister yesterday compared to gold, look at gold. All right, there's a daily and here's silver, the daily. I like shorts in the um, silver up around the 27 level. So as I said earlier, uh, S&Ps are pushing to new highs here. Hi, uh, Sinatra, how are you? Uh, well, we're not quite there. 
but it doesn't look like we'll confirm on the four hour. It doesn't look like we'll confirm on the two. So uh, I know that there was some uh, fib extensions at the 4370 level. Maybe we're there this week and the NASDAQ's still the outperformer. But you may look at this and go, wow, the, these markets are so bullish, they're so bullish. Here, here, I talked about this last week and I just wanna show you one more time. Here's the Russell. Starting to roll over again. It still could not make a new high last week. Couldn't even take out this high, let alone the March high. It's on the verge of rolling over here. Um, it's 2,000 stocks, the Russell 2000. They're mainly domestic U.S. stocks. So maybe that's a commentary on what's happening here. Um, yeah, under 220, yeah. So the bears will be in, in control under this low is what NG is saying here. I think so. I think there's a big break coming. When a market can't make a new high for you know four or five months while the rest of the board is making successive new high after new high, there's got to be a market message in it. I know some people are still looking for a new high. I just look at this and the weekly and you know you talk about a breakout. Uh, so this was a breakout, gave you a few chances to buy it. Hey, Mr. Market was so, so nice that he would have even let you buy it underneath the breakout. You could have bought this underneath the breakout. Isn't that nice? You miss a breakout a few times, we'll let you buy it underneath it. Okay, and then it uh, was back above the triangle. Oh, you still missed it. Here's another chance. You could buy it right here. And now here we are. So I'm just being facetious. And the VIX is pulling back a little bit, but you know, I still think it's under accumulation. We're making new highs and we're not at 14, you know, and all these little wicks that we've been seeing for the past several weeks, a lot of ghost trades where it opens up down there. You don't even see a trade and then it's back near the high and putting in nice candles. You could probably count around 10 here in the past few weeks or at least since June. So uh, I, I think that um, the VIX is going to break out. This looks like a pretty important line, this 18 and this 19. So I'd buy weakness in VIX. One thing that needs to complete to have a um, the beginning of a correction in um, Apple. What do you guys see there? What do you see? What's about to happen? And this took a long time to get back to new highs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it should diverge up here. They'll be confirmed. They'll be confirmed highs on shorter term time frames. Look at that. But anyway, I, I'm interested in the form that we're getting there. Also, one of the darlings never broke up, broke out to the upside. And there you go. And it starts with a T. And it rhymes with me, Tesla. Okay, so I drew this descending line, you know, before we had this, and it still couldn't penetrate it. This was yesterday. It's a big descending triangle. This would be one of my short candidates. This is what's carrying uh, NASDAQ up to new highs, but as you could tell on the weekly, we're not confirming. On the daily, we are four hour, we are, yeah. So Amazon looking good. Microsoft trying to stall a little bit. Okay, if we make new highs here, it won't confirm. But if you look at the form on, on this, it also could be a three, a little stretched out here, confirming on the daily, but that's what happens in blow offs. 
I think that's about all the NASDAQ. Oh, Google finally made a new high the other day. But look how Google is not confirming. I mean, it's a shade over 80, but you know, it's making new highs and has not taken out this reading all the way back here. Shorter term, it probably is. Yeah, there, there, there. Okay. So uh, here's something else to keep an eye on. You know, uh, people believe that junk bonds will lead the way. And it looks like the high yielders are having some trouble here. This was uh, the 15 minutes. Here's your daily. Starting to run out a little juice here. It's diverging pretty good. So keep an eye on junk and the HYG because uh, this should lead the way. You're welcome. I, and I, oh, I got this. I started watching this again because of Scott, uh, AKA Shooter. So, uh, and he started watching it because of Michelle Schneider. And um, I'm interested in what my team has to say coming into today. So I'm gonna hand it off to Stelios. Good morning. My trading warrior brother. Hello, coach. How you, How how's are everybody? You, buddy? I'm How good. I'm doing, very bro? good. All I'll right, take the so, screen. Yeah, take it. I don't want it anymore. <laughs> you could have it, buddy. Okay, so, so you talk, yields. Go ahead. You talked about uh, high yields. Um, we are, what we're starting to see is a little bit of a tug of war now between inflation and yields because one cannot go up substantially without, without the other following. So we have inflation pretty much everywhere. Uh, maybe the Eurozone is the only one which is at or near target. Um, inflation is rising and we're seeing yields falling. You know, what does that tell us? This is really odd, but at some point when you get inflation, uh, not only uh, reported inflation, but real inflation uh, rising quite a lot, then things like treasuries and bonds nobody's going to want to buy those, right? I mean, obviously you have institutional buyers who have to buy them, but uh, who have to have a percentage of their holdings in treasuries and bonds and all that. But it makes no sense. So at some point you're going to get the Fed from being the biggest buyer of treasuries to the only buyer of treasuries or sort of, uh, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not yeah. exactly that. But um, so, you know, we're seeing this, what is it? 30 year channel. It's incredible. You know, I haven't seen a, a, a channel this big in anything um, and it just keeps going. Um, I think I personally think that inflation is not transitory. I think it's going to be elevated for a while. It's not going to be 5 percent, but I think it's going to be um, in the US, I mean, but I think it's going to be quite a bit higher than 2 percent. So at some point, yields are going to have to rise. At some point, the Fed is going to have to do some kind of tightening. We're going to get the, the minutes, the FOMC minutes later today. And like we said yesterday, I don't see any way that the Fed can surprise us uh, to the dovish side. Obviously, I could be wrong, but I, I, I just don't see it. Um, it's possible that they might give us more information about what Jay Powell referred to as thinking about starting to talk about tapering. Um, and that might give the market a bit more um, direction. But at the end of the day, I think yields are too low compared to well, I don't want to say fair pricing, but, you know, compared to what they should be. Um, and uh, with inflation this high, they have to start going. Now, you know, how far lower do they go before they rise? Well, look, we're in, the, we're in a nice little support zone here in, in 10-year US, which, um, you know, if, if somebody wants to get a long yield, so short treasury, it's probably not a bad place to, to start. Uh, the bonds are not... The, the bonds are a little bit different. Um, I think, remember, I had been short the bonds and I, I was lucky enough to, I was short from about 175 or something like that. And I closed, not at the lows, but near the lows. I got quite lucky with that. I think we might have another push uh, higher, but then I think we're definitely going to be testing those, uh, those lows again. Um, it's a difficult situation. You know, the Fed, they want to tighten, but they don't want to disturb markets. They don't want to disrupt them. They don't want to bring a... Um, a, uh, a crash or not a crash, but even, even a, you know, a down move, you know, 10, 15, 20, 25 percent. I, I don't think they want that. So they're going to try and do whatever they can uh, to avoid that. But at the, end of the, at the end of the day, I don't think they can avoid yields rising. And if yields rise, then 
I think we can all agree that um, equities are going to be going lower. Now, how much lower? It's, it's a good question, but um, we have to remember that the Fed can very easily find excuses to say, oh, you know what, we're talking about thinking about tapering, but um, you know, for X, Y, Z reason, this is not going to happen. And, um, and then we're going to see the dollar index testing lows again. But before that, I think we might get a little bit more of a push higher in the, in the dollar index, probably around 94, which is a nice conference here, the um, 38.2 and the 200 daily moving average, sorry, weekly moving average. Um, and the, the thing to remember, though, is that now the dollar sentiment and uh, position, I haven't seen the COT, but I'm guessing it's the same. DSI is now close to 50 on the dollar. So it used to be very over, um, very bearish. You, you was in the teens. Now it's not anymore. So it's kind of working off these bearish um, uh, sentiment situation. Um, I still think we might get a push towards 94, but my medium term view is still the same. I think the dollar is going to be going lower. It's going to test these lows and it's going to break them. Will it be in a month, in six months, in a year? I don't know, but um, I think it's going to get there. Uh, so uh, this, is, uh, this is what I think about the dollar. Now, some currencies like commodity currencies, they are all behaving in a quite a similar way. So the Aussie um, almost, you know, I had drawn this zone, this resistance zone here for a while for, you know, this is a weekly chart and uh, almost got there and rejected it. The Kiwi, same, it got there, rejected it. The CAD, actually what the CAD do, there you go. Same thing. So commodity currencies are moving in tandem and um, these are the ones that are going to move most as the dollar strengthens or weakens. So I think it's, uh, you know, Blake has been saying for some days now, he had a couple of really nice pips as well, uh, patterns in play on uh, here in Forex Analytics. And uh, he had been a um, uh, counter trend uh, long dollars and it's worked really well. Um, and I think we might have a little bit more to go. But um, uh, as I said before, I think this dollar bounce eventually should be sold. I am waiting. I'm not, uh, I haven't done anything yet. My, my positions are still long silver and gold, which everybody knows and miners as well. And, you know, metals have um, underperformed a little bit, but, you know, they're not, um, you know, given the move of the dollar, they're not, uh, you know, they're not showing any technical damage. Let's put it this way. I think Steve would agree. Silver is still within this wedgy thing and it's been trading quite nicely in it. Um, obviously, if the dollar goes towards 94 in the DXY, we might threaten breaking this. Um, that could do some damage, you know, we could get lower. I'm still waiting to buy more silver at 23 or 24, somewhere there. If we get there, 23, 24 handle, I'm still, um, I'm still waiting to see how the price is gonna evolve. Uh, gold, I had drawn this, probably something a little bit different, but, um, you know, it's consolidating. Look at this move from, the, um, from 2018 was very impulsive, it looks impulsive. We, we have a corrective move here. It's kind of drawn out sideways. It's, you know, it's, it, looks, it looks okay, it looks corrective. So I think eventually gold is gonna be breaking higher as well. Um, it's all about the dollar and equities. And we know that if equity starts dropping, then metals suffer. But look at, you know, look at the s and I mean, this move here is just 45 degrees, no more than that. It's just unsustainable. Uh, but do you go against this? Of course not. I'm not selling this. Uh, we have to see yields rising before stocks can go down. I've been saying this for weeks, right? And yields are not rising. So there's no point fading this. Yesterday, I was seeing all these people reading about people. Oh, yes, this is the start of a bear move. Look at the yields. No, it's not. And today, we have a, we have a reversal. NASDAQ is up. For, okay, not as much as it uh, lost yesterday, but it's still up almost 1%, you know, it's a, it's a blip. Um, so, you know, I've, I'm not staying, I'm not getting in the way of this. The, the DAX is exactly the same story. This was sending wedge, whatever you want to call it. It's just brutal to get in, in, in front of it. So I, I, you know, I would never, I would never touch this. Um, unfortunately, um, oil has been very strong. We know that. Again, this big resistance zone here, which I had drawn weeks or months ago, we've just entered it now. And lo and behold, we just came right back down and uh, uh, from $76, we're down to 73. You know, it's gonna be difficult for oil to go past that. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's gonna be difficult. And we need OPEC to basically not agree on anything. And um, then I think it can break, it can break higher. Um, but 
as I said before, I think the dollar is, you know, I think it may have some legs still. It might go a little bit higher. So, um, you know, it, it, it could continue. But I think it's, it's going to be a selling opportunity. That's, you know, that's my view for that. Um, Bitcoin, because people do still look at cryptos, is still within this flag, whatever you want to call it. It's getting drawn out a little bit more, but still it's, uh, it was an impulsive move lower from 60 odd thousand and it's just correcting. And I have to say it looks weak. You know, I don't see anything strong with it at the moment. It's trying to bounce and the more time it's spending down here, I think the more probable it is, it's going to break. And if it breaks, then, you know, we have the 26,000 mark, which is Michael Saylor's average. Everybody knows that. And, you know, Steve has said that so many times when the market knows where the pressure point is, where pain is, it will always go for it. You know, I saw this even when I was a market maker in London, there were people sitting next to me who had huge positions on certain derivatives. And as soon as the market got a whiff of it, they did everything they could just to press on it and to you know try to get you to stop out. And it usually works. So I think if we drop lower, we're getting towards 26,000. That's going to be defended heavily. Uh, but man, if that goes... Um, you know, I, I'm not kidding. I think it's somewhere between 10 and 15,000. That's, I think, the, the, the target. And that's where I, even I am going to be looking to get, get along that. So I am sitting patiently and uh, waiting for that. I don't know what, uh, what you guys think about uh, cryptos, but I think it's, uh, oh, we did look at the boom. No, sorry. Um, so that's my view. And uh, last one, Euro pound. I've been talking about this for a while. I said this late uh, last year, late December, when we got the deal done. I said, I think the pound is going to be one of the currencies that's going to be doing well next year. Um, and um, I still think Euro pound in particular has the potential to test the zone 83, 84. I'm going to be looking for the first time in ages to get a long Euro pound there. Uh, I've been trading in the short side for a while and uh, it's been pretty good to me, but I do think we're going we're gonna to get there and... That is then a big decision that we need to make. Yeah, your 92 <clears throat> short call was a great one still. Yeah, it was good. And, you know, sometimes you get really lucky with the entry, sometimes not. I'm usually early. That's what my wife says as well. But, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, this one was, this one was good. <clears throat> um, and that's uh, pretty much what I have. I don't know if Steve is here to give it's us not the, It's not the entry. It's whether you get out of the trade too fast. Yeah, that's good too. <laughs> Go oh, quick draw, quick draw, Volkies here. Oh, okay. Hey, buddy, I, I've been here, here listening uh, to his to his um, uh, rant, right being a, being a quiet boy. Yes, yes, it yeah. was great. It was a great review. I had no um, uh, nothing really to add. I mean, I agree with. Um, more or less everything that you said. Um, now, uh, I think it's a common understanding that we all more or less agree here that uh, the dollar's rebound seems to be corrective. At the same time, we seem to agree that this correction might have a little bit more to run. Now, tying that up with fundamentals, um, in my opinion, the end of this corrective rebound which, by the way, since we're talking about the dollar having uh, the ability to extend higher, I think that today's uh, FOMC meetings might provide the catalyst for that, for yeah. another extension high, higher in the dollar. It is, it is very likely. I mean, it has the potential of providing that kind of a catalyst. Now, I think that this um, uh, extension high in the dollar will probably uh, die once the market realizes that the focus shouldn't really be that much on expectations of if the Fed is going to eventually move, because the Fed most likely is eventually going to move. But what the Fed is willing to do and how much is what the Fed is willing to do uh, in comparison with what needs to be done. Um, so I, I think that, uh, and, and this is when the metals, the precious metals are going to find the monetary metals, even better if I may say so, about gold and silver are going to find the bottom. So once the market realizes that even if and when the Fed moves, it's going to be too little, um, too late, uh, I think that's when the uh, dollar is going to continue lower, probably with force. 
uh, that's when the metals are going to explode higher, probably with force. Um, and we're going to see the uh, prior trend resume. Uh, my medium to long term thesis about uh, the dollar weakening has, hasn't changed at all because fundamentally speaking, absolutely, absolutely nothing has changed. Now, um, I see a lot of people commenting about the uh, yields, the treasuries. Somebody else was asking, like, why do we have this move lower, etc. I've said it before. Um, I've said it before on this webinar and on the next one, the Morning Edge, we have for uh, Forex Analytics members. Um, you need to take everything that has to do with uh, government bonds with, with, with a grain of salt, right? Somebody else wrote a comment just, you know, uh, a minute ago that uh, the equity move has been BS since 2009. Listen, all the uh, the froth and the bubbles that have been built have been built up upon one single construct, and that is the extreme overvaluation of uh, fixed income and government bonds. And the reason why that is possible is because the main buyer has ended up being central banks, banks themselves. Um, having said that, I do believe that you know there is some, uh, you know, th this is not a completely fixed market, so it follows some direction, but the extent of the moves is extremely contained. Uh, so I still believe that um, uh, treasuries are going to turn lower soon. I think they've had a corrective pullback, the, the, uh, sorry, rebound. I'm, I was talking now about the yields. They've had a corrective um, pullback. Now, I do think that yields are going to move higher and uh, treasuries are going to move lower. But, you know, keep in mind that Whatever you see is completely, completely BS, right? I mean, get the central banks out of the equation and trust me, the market is going to find a new equilibrium at completely different levels. But when I say completely, I mean completely different levels, right? So there's no question about it. Uh, equities are going to remain well bid in general as long as inflation is high. It is, as long as we have so much printing of money, which we do. Uh, we've had like a 30% explosion in um, uh, money supply in, in just a single year, right? Which is unprecedented, N never even came close to that. Steve, do you have any kind of uh, fundamental rationale reason for why the Russell hasn't made a new high since last Oh, yeah, March. that's that's very easy to answer. We've been talking about, in general, most of the times, most of the times, they, they, they have been, there have been periods of overperformance, but if you go back in time, you'll see that the Russell has been, uh, m most of the times, underperforming S&P and the NASDAQ, and the answer is very, very simple. First of all... Domestic the, stocks. Yes. First of all, the Russell includes smaller companies, which benefit a lot less from the mania cycles, right? I mean, okay. very, very um, uh, infrequently you see people piling up on these type of stocks. That's uh, number one. Number two, the Russell is somewhat more grounded to reality because as you said, these are real smaller companies uh, that are involved with the domestic economy so, uh, you know, they're more um, influenced by, you know, the real, uh, you know, quote unquote, real um, condition of, uh, you know, the economy. The US which, economy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Um, and that is why I think that in general, as long as we have this uh, type of environment, you know, people shouldn't expect the Russell to overperform the S&P and the Nasdaq over a long period of time, right? Shorter term, for example, we saw an overperformance of the uh, Russell. Yeah. Yes, when we were, yeah, exactly. When we saw light in the tunnel having to do with um, COVID, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that was a catalyst to see a period of overperformance. But in general, uh, as long as the environment is what it is, uh, you know, FOMO is going to be uh, FOMO and the, um, you know, seeking of some kind of return is going to be pushing people in uh, what's called growth stocks, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Thank that was a great explanation. Thank you very much. Do you see? So you take no market message out of it that uh, um, you know the Dow hasn't made a new high. I think it can today, but no market message out of Russell stalling out for four months. Not really. I I, I still ones. see. I still see this as a bullish consolidation until proven otherwise. Um, I do think that at some point, probably during the summer, we're going to see a sharp leg lower in equities uh, because, you know, these markets only have this type of corrective moves, right? They grind higher for like months and months and then something happens and the market flashes out, uh, you know, the people that, uh, you know, chased at, at the wrong point in time. And then after a few days of a volatile move lower, uh, the market volatility dies again and the slow grind resumes. Um, so at some point we're going to get that within the summer. I'm pretty confident about that, but I don't think it's going to be long lived. And as I said, we have all the ingredients needed for equities in general, with exception of, you know, small periods of time to keep on grinding higher. I don't think that the Fed is going to do anything to interrupt that. Um, and at the same time, as we've said before, inflation favors financial assets. You know, with the exception of, um, you know, um, getting what we call hyperinflation, because hyperinflation is a you know totally different story. But high inflation within the context of, let's say, you know, tolerable is good for equities. Okay, well, uh, I appreciate that answer. Uh, a lot of insight, and now we could get some. Uh, additional wisdom from our guest today, Harold Malgram. Harold, welcome back to FACE. Always look forward to talking to you. I've asked you to unmute. I'll share my screen. Yeah, I've got you on mute. Okay, there, there you go. Hi, Harold. Good to talk to you. Yeah, good to talk to you. So, uh, you know, there's so much going on since you and I last talked. And, you know, one of my major takeaways was uh, if the Biden administration was to get anything through Congress, which uh, seems to have hit some type of uh, brick wall they had until August, um, because then we're into the election cycle, or they had till the end of July because uh, Congress goes on recess. Uh, what kind of grade would you give the first six months or so of the Biden administration? What are they doing well, and what where are they misstepping? Uh, that's a big question, but it's really important. I, I listened to the last um, half hour of your uh, our analysis discussion. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and I thought, you know, you're missing one thing, and that is the, the political background and how it will shape um, stimulus in the U.S., but also how it will shape the Fed policy. So let me okay. just answer your question, but let me first say um, Powell, Powell's term runs out at the end of this year, early next year. And uh, <clears throat> normally... His, if he's staying or there is a successor, uh, it would be decided roughly in November. So if I'm sitting there as Powell and I want to stay, in no way am I going to taper or do anything contractionary. If I do do it, uh, the odds are it's going to cause turmoil and, and I'm out. So Oh, okay, so he has a, he has an axe to grind. Do um, you think he wants to stay on? And do you think Biden will uh, renominate him again? Keep him on? Uh, Wall Street loves him. I think Yellen wants to replace him. That's my my uh, insider's assessment. After you know, I'm I'm still around in the background. Okay, because he's been playing ball with Yellen. I mean, they're. Yep, you know they yep. have a they have a relationship, so that that surprises me a little bit. But well, um, it's just my judgment. She would like somebody who's more uh, like Arthur Burns. Uh, I think she's thinking 
I'm someone who um, would be a kind of sister. <laughs> you know, would be a what? A sister. You know, someone who will work with her within the oh. family. Okay. So, so, um, so just ha that's main, the main background. Now, how has the, the Biden administration fared? Um, you Do know, you have any people in mind that you might pick, Harold? Do you want to put a name out there or no? Yeah, well, the vice chairman, um, um, what's her name? I'm sorry, I'm tipping my tongue. Um, I forgot her name, too. Yeah, well, <laughs> she's forgettable, right. except that she's a, she's a favorite of Yellen. Okay. All right. I mean, that's a that's an interesting uh, headline uh, anyway, that uh, help, that Yellen may want to replace Paul. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So no, uh, no, now, you're, no, now we're talking about Biden. Yeah. Now, um, your your this this point was is correct that they had to um, get something done before September, which meant really have to get it done in July, where we are now, because August Congress goes away, and they don't come back till they don't really work until second week of September. And by then, it's not much time before the Christmas holidays. So the working time is really slim. Um, and now they're tied up in knots over infrastructure right now, but they can't seem to get votes for anything else. So let me explain. Number one, they have a tax bill, but I believe that, that it's impossible to get any change at all in tax law until sometime next year, but probably probably not even then. Okay. Um, so I don't, don't expect any big change in, um, in the climate for your investments. Um, I just don't see the votes. Um, okay. Now, stimulus, yeah, they could barely keep their own uh, caucus together. That's right. They will divide. With, Man and, and, with Manchin, he's uh, you know he's kind of like the fly in the ointment for the Democrats to have a majority, right? Well, I think what he's doing is he's trying to help Biden by uh, sidelining the progressives. He's trying okay. to say you know, the progressives can't pass anything, anything therefore won't pass. So let me just put a marker down here. Stay inside and forget the progressive. So uh, it helps Biden somewhat, even though it looks like it's trouble for him. Um, okay. Typical Senate maneuver of old, you know, old Senate hands. But now, um, regarding an, an additional stimulus, I'd say the odds are zero. Um, Okay. Any time, you know, it's just not going to happen. Unless. Okay, so that that's his second. Isn't that what he wanted to? Uh, the Democratic Party wanted to run parallel with the compromise infrastructure bill that really is about roads and bridges, et cetera. And the other part is human infrastructure. Is that yeah, what you're the, calling stimulus? Yeah, the human interest, the human part, whether yeah. it's uh, assistance to working mothers. So yeah. they can go back to work, all of that stuff. It's not going to pass. I thought uh, they already passed something where uh, they're going to get child care, uh, 300 per child. Uh, yeah. That, ha yeah, that, that is, has not that passed? Is, no, that passed in the previous stimulus. Okay. That's in right. motion. But that's okay. about it. But we're okay. not going to get anything new. So okay. I know this sounds bleak, but here, here's what I think you keep the point focused. There is discussion in both parties. Is there any way the voting outlook can change? And the answer is yes. If there is a major negative correction in the stock market, that will scare a lot of Republicans into working with the Biden team. So in the background, um, unhappily, there is a lot of talk, is there a way to to engineer a downward correction in the stock market sometime between now and the end of the year, because that is the only way we're going to get votes for, for any expansion. Well, um, what do you think? I mean, uh, I, look how effective 
at least for a day, just jawboning, Paul's jawboning about, yes, eventually we're going to taper. It took about a hundred bucks out of gold and silver. Right. And the yep. S&P sold off pretty good, although then he came back out and softened his uh, uh, speech a little bit. And we have the Fed minutes today. Could right. uh, the, the Fed minutes uh, be part of it? Uh, it should be easy to engineer. Uh, the market would not like a taper. It definitely would not like higher rates. Um, okay, right. But just a taper could do it, right? Well, here's what I see. Will, will um, Powell cooperate with Yellen and let, you know, and uh, let a negative correction bloom? Uh, or will he, you know, be cautious? Uh, yeah. The, the Treasury is probably going to, somewhere along in here, paint a bleak picture. Now, how is the economy faring as we talk? Uh, as, as I watched your comments about the 10-year yield, uh, and you, you put, as I do, a, a further downward move to about 120. And I thought, yeah, that's about right. Um, I think we have more to go downward on the uh, tens and thirties. Okay, we're and, at one thirty-one uh, now. It's actually coming off again today. So yeah, it's, uh, we're it's, ten uh, bips away. Ten bips away from where my target. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is frankly my assessment of, of the last week or two that we were now on the edge. And now we look at the economy. Um, we have mixed signals. It's true, but the reality is the housing boom appears to be over. Not, not that it pe it's peaking, but it did peak. Uh, the high end is showing pain. The high end home builders say that you know, the, the market's drying up. The lumber index is falling rapidly. Um, it, uh, I think the, 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 when we look at ISM and PMI, um, we see good numbers except that the numbers for employment and capital spending are terrible. Um, the, uh, I, think we're seeing, I think the economy is now turning. Uh, what we're seeing is demand is not sufficient without more stimulus. And uh, we're going to slow down markedly in the second half. Now, all of that is background to what we think about um, how this political turmoil will be resolved. Now, is the Biden team really good at this or not? I have to give them a C plus um, because they're, they're tangled up with uh, a bunch of progressives who want to do something that can't be done. They simply can't get the votes, but they, they keep dividing among themselves. And uh, Biden knows how to do this. He has experience, but he can't control the party. And uh, Nancy Pelosi in the House, she's trying to keep her power, uh, but that means she has to take care of the progressives. So it's a, it's a, you know, it's, a, it's not getting anywhere. They're caught in a, in a mire. Um, so all of this is backdrop. Now, um, so when you start looking at currencies and commodities, well, I don't want to touch on commodities. You have the best possible person tomorrow. Um, oh, we uh, already had Tracy yesterday. Right, yeah. Oh, I yeah. see. I didn't see. I thought you All right. Well, the, yeah. So it's it's on video if you want to watch it. But Oh, I will do. Yeah, but she's, she's great. So everybody who yeah. should watch, she's about as good as it gets. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so, so the backdrop is um, the economy is, in my judgment, sagging. And then we're at this questionable period of, are we going to have an engineered negative correction uh, or are we going to stay where we are? I don't think we can stay where we are as the uh, weakness shows. So then how, how is it controlled? Does Powell want to stay? He'll cooperate in whatever is necessary. Um, but I, I don't think we should expect any, any sign of uh, tightening or hinting or tapering. Uh, it's just not the right moment. Unless, unless Yellen says um, you know, explicitly, 
if you, you know, she's not going to say if you want to stay, but basically it will be that message. This is what I want. Um, so could they do that by coming out with these kind of jawbone statements about uh, uh, stock prices are, uh, uh, you know, elevated. irrational, exuberant, yes. or uh, yes. frothy? Uh, and... some, somewhere in there, I would not be surprised. That would, okay. Yeah. All right. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I don't know what you're thinking, Harold, but uh, I know you have a a bottoming target around 120. But when I look at yields here, um, to me, what the yields coming down from over 170 towards 120, it's just a correction from the yield move from a 50 bips to 170. Right. And to me, this is just correcting this first big advance that we had in yeah. yields. And there's another wave after this decline to the upside above 2%. So, and, and you know what? The Fed didn't tighten and look what still happened. So what was this? Who drove rates from here to here if it yep. wasn't the Fed? Bond vigilantes? Yep. Well, this is, yeah. This is all about the blame game. Who's going to get blamed? <laughs> okay. And the Fed wants to resist blame. So that's probably the driving force at the moment. They don't want to be blamed for anything um, that even slightly uh, uh, favors a big change in the board. Yeah, because they're already unpopular. Yeah. The popular in Wall Street, not popular in the Treasury. Okay. All right. So uh, uh, Yellen really... Uh, uh, pulling the strings uh, for what's going to happen in the Fed, and that's when in the fall, November, you said again? Yeah. Harold? November. Sure. All right, can we uh, switch gears? I know you have a lot of experience um, on the defense side of things. Okay, yeah. so uh, I want to ask you, you know, Biden had his big uh, summit with Putin, and less than three weeks later, there's another big hack. Uh, I don't know if Biden gave him a wink and a nod that it's okay to hack the Republicans <laughs> since he <laughs> hacked us already. But, you know, uh, it seems like uh, there's going to have to be some type of retaliation. And I've read that uh, we're just not really strong enough in this area that if we retaliate, that then the next action we may not be able to handle. What do you think Biden will do or won't do when it comes to Russia right now? Yeah, he, his foreign policy team uh, is capable, but not, um, not at the level of uh, experience that I think they ought to be. I mean, they should not have met with Putin in the first place. And so, because it, it opened. Uh, gave him legitimacy. Uh, it gave him legitimacy. And then they favored him with this uh, dropping the Nord Stream 2 sanction, which gave him more legitimacy. But they didn't okay. get much back. Um, now. No, this is what they got back. And this was not the, you know, the the criminal uh, uh, syndicate, uh, this was the military service going yeah, into. Yeah, the GRU, the military yeah. squad. Right. Um, right. I think, well, I've been asked by a lot of different people, how would you get back? And I said, you don't do it in, in, uh, in the same way. What you do is target um, Putin's personal power base. Um, he, he basically is supported by a, a dozen or two oligarchs. And, all, you know, he gets money out of the flow of all their businesses. Um, Mainly oil? It, it, not only oil and gas. I mean, every major company in, in, okay. uh, in Russia is subservient to Putin and, and his, own, uh, his own bank. Um, and... And you can go after the, you know, the bank accounts. A lot of the, the oligarchs, for example, have money outside Russia. I mean, it's long tradition of making money under the Soviet Union and putting a large part of it outside where it was unreachable. 
Are they uh, using Cyprus like they did? I mean, they were they got that's, banged that's, pretty good moving uh, in Cyprus when they had that bail in. Yeah, that still works. Cyprus is still a major float. Uh, okay. It's been a long time. I'm really familiar with Cyprus. It's decades long. Um, and uh, and that flow is directed by Alpha Bank. Deutsche Bank is very much involved with that Cyprus Bank channel. Uh, the Russian money flows through uh, places where we can see it. And uh, so, you know, you're going to get at Putin. You have to get at his power structure because if you, if you nail his supporters, <laughs> They they're going to they have pressure capability on Putin, but yeah, if you try instead, to do it, like, instead of like I heard someone say that they were considering uh, turning out the lights in Russia, and that that's not going to build any uh, you know popular sentiment for the U.S. Yeah. with the whole population if we take down their grid. Um, yeah, that's, no, yeah, you don't want to make the people unhappy. Yeah. Right. Uh, so just attach, uh, just take away his financial power. That's right. Okay. okay. Uh, and with China, you see any developments with, what do you think uh, about the way that um, Biden's interacting with China? I heard that the administration said that Taiwan is no longer a problem or a complication for the U.S. It's an opportunity. What do they mean by that? Yeah, they don't know what they mean. They're just, they're, they're, they are playing this day to day because China is upset increasingly um, by talk of, of uh, de, you know, among uh, Australia, Japan, and the US talk of defending Taiwan. And then the Japanese came out and said, well, we'll participate in the defense of Taiwan. So everything is heightened tension. Um, and I don't know if I really agree with how they're handling this. They're trying to use soft words mixed with hard words. Um, and it's very confusing. I think it's day to day. Um, but if you boil this down, China is not in a position to have a full scale war uh, with Taiwan without losing a lot of lives of the military. and. You know, you remember that when uh, when Russia was in this battle in Chechnya, it, it finally came to an end because so many Russian soldiers were killed that the mothers of Russia, you know, basically turned on central government, and said, "That's it, no more." Um, I think China, even more so, uh, it's a culture built around families and. Most of these families, if they have a son, that's their only child. They're not going to want right. the boys to be killed. Uh, right. So they're, they're not going to go into kinetic warfare. They may try to harass Taiwan, but, um, but the damage to the regime, if they actually went to war and, and lost a, a generation or two of young men, uh, I think Xi, put, Xi Jinping would, would not survive that. Okay. All right. Uh, all yeah. right. Uh, because uh, uh, what's happening in, in China uh, with uh, their currency uh, is that uh, China has done a few things. They're trying to push commodity prices down. Yes. And they want the uh, yuan to um, depreciate uh, in value that it's, it's been a little bit uh, too much. Uh, what do you think uh, China does when it comes to uh, currency? They're talking about going with a digital yuan. Is uh, this Cold War really just an economic Cold War between us and China? For now, yes, but it's, but it's a really hard war because Xi Jinping is really upset about what he calls uh, the American blocking uh, of China's technology progress. Um, and I see. Is that why they did the? I mean, there's all kinds of things happening to Chinese stocks, and uh, there was yeah. one that was cut in half, and they're really going after uh, their big corporations that are domestic companies or Chinese companies. Why are they yeah. doing that? Uh, 
basically, number one, the Chinese economy is not growing as fast as it looks. They measure their growth by output, but demand is really, really weak. And if we look at uh, consumption at the at the you know ordinary working folk level, it's extremely weak because there's been no rise in uh, uh, in incomes from the majority of people for the last several years. They have to find some way of shaking up the internal economy, and but they don't haven't quite found a way to do it yet. It's, it's, but we should, they are not, they're growing really at about 2% rate, not 6, 7, 8%. But it's just, we, we are mesmerized by these output numbers. Um, uh, so they're, they're in a crisis internally. And I think uh, Xi Jinping is struggling to maintain power because his power, to some extent, depends not only on the party apparatus, but on the wealthiest Chinese families. Um, you know, that we overlook this, but they have the oligarchs also. Um, you know, the concentration of, of, of the economy in China is like Russia, is increasingly like the US, highly concentrated um, enterprises dominating everything. And um, so the leadership is struggling with this inequality. Uh, slow growth, unhappiness, and then food. Food is a nightmare because. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it could be a nightmare here, Harold. If you look at uh, grain prices, they've. I, yeah, uh, I expect, they've, yeah. yeah. I right. expect a nightmare here too. I think we I think the inflation that we're having uh, is going to die down, except for food. The food is going to be a nightmare coming, going ahead. And water. W we really have to, you know, Biden people are not thinking about these things. They keep talking about green economy, but they're not focused on the reality. We have a water problem that's fast developing on the western side of the U.S. Yeah. That was foreseeable. But we have a big water problem in the central U.S. where the water table drought. is slowly yeah. Yeah. Drought, drought is coming unless we rethink how we distribute water. And um, I don't see anyone in the administration thinking ahead. I've been thinking about this some years, about how to move water from the Arctic through Canada to the U.S. Because there's a lot of water if we just move it. Yeah, it's um, melting anyway. Yeah. So. I, yeah. Well, why don't you call uh, Joe today? So that we have some water to drink here in, in, yeah, yeah. in California and Arizona and the whole West. And, and, and you know, uh, how about not using corn for ethanol anymore uh, yeah. instead of, you know, feed people with the corn instead of making fuel out of it. That's the most. Well, I'm with you, but I don't see anyone around Biden who has that kind of mind that you have. Or think well, I, maybe I should run. Why not? Um, Would, yeah, okay. You, you, you I have too running. many skeletons in my closet. Yeah, I've been around this for too long. And by the way, this brings me to a point you didn't mention, but that's about all this Bitcoin controversy. I have a half okay. Have a, a minute. Um, yeah. I'm not. I have never taken sides on whether cryptocurrency is a good thing or a bad thing. I've simply been observing how central banks and governments look at it, and Predictably, they are getting increasingly nervous. Uh, intolerant. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I'm not just nervous. I think yeah. they're now at the point, how do we get a grip on it, control it, or just stamp it out? It, it varies among. So we're going to see increasing effort by all governments with the U.S. Uh, right in front of making it extremely expensive, uh, making it extremely taxable, more taxable than it should be, um, and eventually uh, making it impossible to function in a market sense. I think, I just don't think that cryptocurrencies have much future because they weren't allowed to be. Right. Um, the, so uh, the rest of the world's going to go the way of China banning it. Yeah, but China's doing it slowly because they can't quite 
you know, China is a is an economy where there's a lot visible, but you know, a lot happens that's not visible. So their problem of putting everything under a digital system it would be much harder than it is in the U.S. Okay, well, I tell you what, Harold, it's always eye-opening and uh, to get some uh, thoughts about what's happening in our Meshuggah world that we have going on here today. <laughs> if you know, need a translation, let me know. It means crazy <laughs> in Yiddish, but uh, really uh, appreciate your time and you spending it with us and uh, really some interesting things were brought up about possibly engineering a stock market decline that would get uh, the Republicans mm -hmm. on board. Because I remember TARP when it was uh, voted yep. down and then the market tanked. And yeah, there's nothing like uh, people's 401ks melting to get uh, senators <laughs> and congressmen <laughs> into action. So thank you very much, Harold, for uh, showing up and being with us again today. And I look forward to our next conversation. Good. Uh, me too. All right, buddy. Be time. All right. Yeah. Everyone, uh, yeah, everyone, Harold Malgram, and uh, you could go to his website and read about him and their research. And if you like what Harold uh, had to say, and there's, you know, a very interesting and experience and wisdom comes with time it only comes with the passing of time and uh harold's got an abundance of it so thanks again harold for being with us today adios adios adios, adios my friend see you guys tomorrow remember don't just count your pips count your blessings and see you tomorrow <laughs>